It's time once again for that business show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Wins WHNZ, where business becomes show business. Now, live in studio and promoting the entrepreneurial spirit that drives the American economy, your host, Jamie Maloney. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to that business show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Uh, hoping everybody's having a great uh, Monday here coming off of this uh, daylight savings time adjustment. I hate daylight savings time. It's just something I dread every single uh, year. And uh, But I hope everybody's uh, having a great uh, Monday back to work. And, uh, again, you can catch this show here on every uh, weekday, actually, at 8 a.m., uh, talking to all the different business owners and entrepreneurs in and around the Tampa Bay region. I invite you over to my website where you can learn more about the show and see our upcoming uh, lineup of guests over at tampabayradio.com. Also on the site, you'll see all of my uh, property listings as I specialize in the sale of bank-owned properties and uh, currently uh, ranked number uh, four nationally uh, this uh, past year with, uh, in Coldwell Banker for uh, homes sold coming in at just over 250 uh, properties. So I and my team have a, are an excellent resource for uh, properties in the uh, Tampa Bay region. Also, if you're looking to uh, you know, promote yourself on the air, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you on this show. Best way to get me, shoot me an email over at uh, jamie at tampabayradio.com. Here in just a little bit, we're going to be talking with uh, Stanley Goodman from Bicito Mexican about the uh, new restaurant that's going to be opening up in the uh, South Tampa region here in the uh, in the next month. And I'm uh, also joined in studio today with my uh, expert contributor and co-host for the show, uh, Jim McPeak of the Mc peak real estate firm jim how you doing today great how you doing jamie good doing, to see you this morning hey uh, thanks uh thanks for coming in on uh short notice and everything so uh how was the weekend oh weekend was great jamie i, I just want to explain to you something that you don't really appreciate daylight savings time like you should how's that well first of all you need to celebrate daylight savings time <laughs> there's an I extra it? hour at the bar that night oh okay <laughs> you just go to the bar and uh, believe me at the end of the hour there's like all kinds of tens in the in the air right <laughs> Extra hour? No, when they spring forward, how's their extra hour? It's when they spring back, you, or you fall back, you get the extra hour. Maybe that's why they threw me out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it backwards. Yeah, now that, that that point comes up to, on the fallbacks. To remember that, I always think of you spring forward and you fall back. That's how I remember the the time shifts and everything. So, but uh, this is not something I'm a fan of, and I'm sure a lot of people are feeling it uh, this morning. So, so uh, you spent the weekend at Epcot. How was that? Oh, it was great. Actually, we went to Animal Kingdom first, mm -hmm. and uh, Animal Kingdom they have a show over there called the Birds of Wonder. Mm -hmm. I had never seen it. Uh, for years, you know, and, and I don't even remember seeing it before. I, I, it's one of the good things about being as old as me. Um, <laughs> you can go see the show, this, you know, you hide your own Easter eggs. Um, <clears throat> but it was a great show, very comical, very entertaining. Mm -hmm. Really enjoyed it. Very nice, very nice. Well, let's go ahead and bring on our first guest uh, for the uh, show. Stanley Goodman joined uh, Basito Mexican in April 2014 and brings to his position a broad background of over 30 years of experience in the hospitality and restaurant industry in North and South America. Prior to, ju prior to joining Basito Mexican, Goodman served six years as president with Windermere House, a resort development in eastern Canada, and also served as joint venture partner and director of Outback Steakhouse in eastern Canada for a period of 13 years years. Stanley, welcome to the show today. Uh, buenos dias, uh, Jamie. And, and, you, and welcome. Well, I think that means uh, hello, right? There you go. Good morning. <laughs> bueno. Bueno. Bueno is good. Yeah. I, tell you, I, I dated a Spanish girl for, you know, 12 years, and I, I'm terrible with Spanish. I've brought that up on the show mm. many at times and everything. So so don't talk too much Spanish with me. I, I know some of the key words, though. <laughs> you brought uh, your business uh, partner here with you, uh, Andres uh, uh, Farfon, right? Yeah, he's in the studio with us. You're going to be making some guacamole for us here in studio today, right? We sure are. We're yeah. going to make it on the lava rock. Oh, uh, nice. Fresh ingredients. Yeah, if you want to go and start whipping that up. If Also, if you want to catch uh, the live stream, you can see us in studio here. Just head over to tampabayradio.com and click on the live stream button. But um, he's going to be uh, preparing some guacamole for us here in the studio. So if you want to kind of get a, a feel for how this stuff is made. So so tell me, what what is what are you putting together here? How is what's What all goes into your guacamole? Well, we put uh, fresh... Uh, fresh cilantro, uh, diced tomatoes, uh, white onions, mm -hmm. and then uh, we're gonna we're gonna make it spicy today. So we're gonna put some jalapenos, and then we will put some salt. Yeah, 
guacamole is something that seems to be catching on. I'm seeing that in a lot more of the sandwiches and things like that. Do you do you find right now that this is a, a movement in the in the food industry? Like oh yeah, more? without a doubt. Well, it's very healthy for you, which is what's important. Yeah, and avocado is really really good for you. Yeah, what, what's yeah. so good about the avocado? It's I mean, a good, it's a good fat. It's yeah. a good fat, and it's just good for the body. Want. I need good fat. Man. You do need I need, it. I got a lot of bad fat then, on me and everything. You know, one of the things the way we make it, it's all fresh. Yeah, so that's what that's what's important. All fresh ingredients. Yeah. Well, go ahead and uh, start whipping that up for us, there, uh, man. Sure. I'll be uh, eating on that all single all day here today. So I appreciate you coming in and doing that for us. And again, you can catch us over here on the live stream over at uh, TampaBayRadio.com. Uh, and so let's go over here to uh, Stanley. So Basito uh, Mexican. So first of all, what does Basito mean? Well, uh, Jamie, Basito actually means little kiss in in Mexican, uh, and that's the play that we use in our restaurant. It's we like to see our restaurants polished, casual, feel comfortable to come there. But more importantly, what makes this restaurant successful is everything that's made from scratch. As, uh, as you see Andres making right here, uh, guacamole, table-side guacamole in our restaurants is just it's phenomenal. There's a, there's a lot of great restaurants, as we all know here in, uh, in the Florida region, uh, specifically Mexican. Mm -hmm. um, the concept that we have here was first founded by a gentleman by the name of John Tunney, uh, a famous restaurateur up in uh, the New York area and started the first Basito 2006 in a little town called Huntington, just out in Long Island, mm -hmm. and it's been extre extremely successful then. And, uh, we, you know, we've uh, been fortunate enough to bring this across over here, and we think we've got something really special to introduce here to the Florida market. With now, the restaurant's not open just yet. It's opening up here in a few weeks, so tell us a little bit about uh, the location, the launch, and all of this. Absolutely. So we, uh, the first location that we're doing is up at uh, West Shore Plaza on uh, Del Mabry and uh, sorry Kennedy and West Shore I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, located very close to the uh, P. F. Chang's Maggiano's restaurant, so easy enough to find. And we thought we'd do that location with respect to being a uh, a high visibility location. Right. Yeah. It's great, great demographics. Area. Yeah. In I mean, the it's, area. Just, it's just great restaurants down there, and it's a, it's a really good place to great. be. E easy access for everybody to get to. And uh, from there, we plan to actually grow this throughout Florida. Uh, we have a second location uh, that will open not too far away, close to the fall in Boca, yeah. and really get the ball rolling here. What's, what's the atmosphere going to be like in there? What, uh, tell me a little bit about the, uh, the restaurant inside. Well, I'm sure if any of you haven't been to Mexico, or you have. It's, uh, this, this is almost going into an old-style hacienda. For mm -hmm. example, the ceilings are uh, eucalyptus that actually comes from South Africa. All mm -hmm. the artifacts in the restaurant are from Oaxaca. So we want you to actually feel like you're coming into somebody's home in, uh, in Mexico and, and, and more so central Mexico and just getting a feeling of being welcomed. That, that besito, as we say, uh, uh, a word that's used in Spanish is the word abrazo, which means the big hug. Mm -hmm. Come into our restaurant and, and feel that true welcome feeling of let's, let's, let's eat as a family, let's make things together and really just have a unique experience, great music. And of course, great tequila. <laughs> so, what's what's uh, what's going to be on the menu? Tell me a little bit about the cuisine and what you're going to be featuring over at Abisito. Uh, absolutely. So, we, we go the gamut from everything. Firstly, all the ingredients is made from scratch. Uh, that like guacamole smells great, by the way. You're getting some uh, guacamole, guacamole made live here in the studio. It smells great, by the way. So yeah, he's over here mashing it up. It looks like one of those medicine things that you mash into, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's working great. My sinuses are being cleaned out right now. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. Yes, we're please. To, about, yeah, so we're to answer your question, um, for example, we'll we'll do a soup, which is known as a soup de tortilla. Uh, it's it's pulled chicken. It's it's <clears throat> got pasilla chilies, and just for everybody's knowledge, everybody's got this uh, this this understanding that Mexican spice is very spicy. Mm -hmm. It's not true. It's very flavorful, in fact, because the balance of what we have is by, for example, one of the items we have is a. Uh, a de hyba, which is a uh, a lump a jumbo lump crab cake done with a um, habanero sauce. And habanero is a fairly uh, hot pepper, but when it's mixed with what we mix it in with, you get that sweetness from the uh, crab going in with the habanero. And it's a great balance. Mm -hmm. So all the different chilies that you're doing, for example, Andres making over here the guacamole, he can make it from anything from mild to as hot as you like it. Mm -hmm. But to, you know, just to make it clear, uh, you're coming in, you're getting salmon, you're getting steak. You're getting uh, a skirt steak, and in different items we do, for example, the, our enchiladas. It's yeah. not just an enchilada. Yeah, I love so. Mexican. I always tell a little funny story whenever I talk about Mexican food, because I grew up in West Virginia, and to me, Mexican was Taco Bell. 
<laughs> and I come down here. We didn't have, and it was a small town in Elkin, so that was pretty much the extent of our Mexican I thought Mexican that was food. Mexican food. Taco I did. Bell. I loved Taco Bell and everything. So, And uh, growing up, I used to, my favorite thing at Taco Bell was uh, the Cholito. And uh, that was, uh, I ate that thing all the time. And then to come out, they then they discontinued it. And I didn't know why. And if you if you look back on the, when they discontinued that product, Cholito has a, uh, a, is a derogatory term in, in the Mexican culture. It means little something. I won't say it on the air. But that's why. <laughs> <laughs> they ended up discontinuing that. So, but it was one of my favorite things on the menu, the the chilito, which was a chili cheese burrito, and uh, so I miss that very much, you know. But that's just, uh, I didn't come when I came down to Florida. I started having you know real Mexican, and people said Taco Bell. I mean, now I call it Taco Hell because that's what it really does uh, to mm-hmm. to the stomach and everything. It's 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 hell on the body. So. <laughs> So tell me about the uh, the, the restaurant in terms of uh, price points. Are you going to be open lunch, dinner, things like that? Tell me about that. Yes, so we will be open lunch and dinner. Uh, we're very, very focused on great service. So what we will do for the first few weeks is just open for dinner only. This mm-hmm. we believe to be an extremely busy location. And as I said, it's we feel it's going to be something unique to the market. And um, we just want to do it right. That's mm-hmm. uh, That's, you know, that's the way we've done it. The group that I'm very, very lucky to uh, to do Basita with up here in um, Florida, I'm sure most are familiar with, is uh, Chris Sullivan and Hugh Carnegie, who are the, uh, Chris being the founder of Outback Steakhouse. And so we put oh, yeah. this group together. And uh, I, I, I was lucky enough once again to uh, uh, be the joint venture partner and run all the Outbacks up in Canada for many years. So very familiar with uh, the concept of hospitality and great service. And that's exactly what we bring to Besido and, uh, you know, what they already have in, 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 in enshrined. And we want to just make sure that when we execute, it's going to be with precision. People are going to see the tableside guacamole. They're going to they're gonna smell those chilies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it smells so. great in here, by the way. Yeah, mm-hmm. I said that just a second ago. But, yeah, that, that's really smelling uh, amazing here in the studio, this uh, live guacamole demonstration. Again, you can catch uh, this uh, preparation over on the uh, website, tampabayradio.com. Uh, just click on the uh, live stream. And if uh, you're just tuning in, you've been listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their shop-at-home flooring sales service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made, well-born cabinets and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. In the market for a reverse mortgage? Contact Access Reverse, a local company with personalized service in the Bay Area. Call them at 727-347-0305 or visit AccessReverse.com for a no-cost, no-obligation consultation. They'll come to your home and speak with you about the best options for your reverse mortgage. Plus, they offer the lowest closing costs. Don't just get a reverse mortgage. Get the right reverse mortgage with Access Reverse. Visit AccessReverse.com. NMLS number 4566. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage want you to experience the thrill of one-day underwriting and the comfort in knowing your loans will be clear to close in record time. While a competition looks to a lost closing date, Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage focus on their 12-day clear-to-close. They do this by utilizing their world-class operations staff to underwrite your loan within six hours, process your loan in 12 days, and have your loan closed in time. Underwritten in six hours, cleared to close in 12 days. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage. Are you looking for a local real estate firm that knows the market and has your interests in mind? Then contact Jim McPeak at McPeak Real Estate Firm a family-owned business whose agents have over 60-plus years of experience in the Tampa Bay market. Many of the agents are military veterans that know the VA process for buying a home and are proud to help our military members in any way they can. From residential to commercial real estate, McPeak Real Estate Firm is here to help. Contact Jim at 813-495-3875 and learn more at mcpeakteam.com. This report is brought to you by the Foundation for a Better Life. While many rose up with violence, he sat down for peace. Mahatma Gandhi reached out with the strength he cultivated within his soul. So, pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. From the Bright House Network's Traffic Center. 
We are still seeing heavy delays in Pasco County on I-75 southbound approaching State Road 52 because of construction that's south of 52 that has a left lane block near mile marker 283. And a serious crash in Tampa blocking northbound traffic on 301 approaching I-4. Traffic is using the left turn lane to squeeze by. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamston Uterwick Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line 866-545-9595. <laughs> Partly cloudy skies today. We'll have a 30% chance of rain this afternoon and a high in the mid-80s. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low of 66. And tomorrow, a bit more humid. We'll have a 20% chance of rain and a high of 83. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back, everybody, to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Learn more about the show over at uh, tampabayradio.com. Also, uh, please uh, connect with me on all the social networking sites to uh, stay up to date with uh, show guests and show recaps. Uh, you can catch me over at uh, facebook.com uh, forward slash that business show. Also, I'm over on the uh, Twitter at uh, Jamie underscore Maloney. Uh, in studio today, we're talking with Stanley Goodman uh, of Basito Mexican, a very nice uh, Mexican uh, cuisine restaurant that's going to be opening up uh, in the West Shore area of uh, South Tampa here in next month. And also uh, joined in studio with uh, co-host uh, Jim McPeak of the uh, McPeak Real Estate Firm. So, uh, Jim, you know, what are you seeing in the real estate markets today? You know, what, 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 What's your take on real estate right now? Oh, real estate right now is a great investment. Mm -hmm. uh, two parts, because Right now, the prices are lower than they've ever been before. They're staying down there. The other thing is, is that the interest rates are very low right now. Right. And you can still get a good, um, good buy. So it's a good time to do investment properties if you'd like to... Uh, Start increasing your portfolio of different investments. Yeah. And you're a military service member, so I always thank you to military service members. And your firm also specializes in uh, a VA uh, representation. Talk to us a little bit about this. Oh, yeah. we um, Several of us were in the military before, and including my son that's an Iraqi war veteran. And uh, one of the things we do is help everybody with the VA loans. Uh, VA process is, is uh, sometimes uh, challenging for some people, but we are able to walk people through it, get people in with, like, a hundred dollars down. I mean, it's actually a hundred dollars to hold the property. Sometimes maybe a thousand dollars, but at closing, you actually get most of it or all of it back. Do you find that a lot of veterans are aware of that and take advantage of of the the VA benefit, or do you th see that a lot of veterans kind of just just forget about that altogether? You know, they kind of put it on the side. They they know they got it, but they're not sure how to work it. And that one of the things we do is is we uh, present them with opportunities on how to actually get the VA process rolling for themselves. And I was reading an article uh, this past weekend. Uh, it seems uh, enrollment in real estate schools uh, are up. A lot of uh, people are getting back into the real estate school. That was down over the last few years uh, from a recruiting standpoint and new agents coming into the market. What are you seeing in that space? There's a lot of new agents coming in the market. And, you know, I, I really don't chase after new agents like some of the other big companies do. Um, what I would like, though, and, and I'm glad you brought that up, Jamie, I'd really like to have a few people that want to earn six <coughs> figures or more. My goal is to have people earning a million dollars in real estate a year, mm -hmm. and I have a plan that will get them up there within five years. So if uh, anybody out there is really wanting to, and that, now I must say a, a four-letter word <laughs> that uh, is not used very often in real estate, if anybody really wants to work real estate, <laughs> Please see me. Yeah. I will help you with that four-letter word. Yeah, so many people uh, get into real estate with uh, unrealistic expectations that, you know, you're just going to show up at a property, sell the home, and then make the commission. I mean, it really is work. It's a very competitive business, and you find out when you get into real estate, there's a lot of players in the game, but there's only like a small percentage of them that are really controlling the business. I don't know what it is about real estate. I think, <clears> that, you know, a lot of it has to do with the low barrier to entry. If anybody's interested in getting real estate into real estate, all they got to do is, uh, apply uh, to the, the state, take the test, or go to the class, and the class is easy. You can mm -hmm. take it online and do the test online. The the only you know real challenge to getting the, the real estate license is passing that state exam because that you have to go to the uh, promissor's office and, and get through that. Did you have any uh, problems uh, passing that real estate exam? You know, I passed all the exams on the first try, the real estate exam, the broker's exam. I was actually a mortgage broker at one time, passed that on the first try. You know, um, when, it, when we're talking about work and, and the work ethics of, of realtors, there's very few of them out there that actually work this business full time. I remember a buddy of mine, his name was Jim Bargo. He ran a used car lot. And uh, one guy came up to him and says, sir, I'd like to work for you. He goes, no problem. 
He says, all right, you can work for me. He goes, what are you going to pay me? He says, I'll pay you what you're worth. He goes, I can't work for that. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're talking off air just a second ago. You also were a, a, a soccer player, correct? And Stanley, you also uh, play a little soccer too, right? Tell me, uh, tell me about your experience in soccer. Where did, Jim, where did you play soccer, first of all? Well, actually, I grew up here in Brandon. Um, I guess we're in Brandon. We're in the Tampa Bay area. I, I grew up in Brandon. And I uh, started with uh, Basil, the first year of Basil, Brandon Area Youth Soccer League. I was with that, and I was actually at the Rowdies games, the old Rowdies games. We used to, I was actually in the Boy Scouts. We used to sell Cokes for the Boy Scouts, and I picked up, a friend of mine picked up a ticket. I was in my second year of soccer or something like that, and he picked up a golden ticket thing, and if you have the right second for uh, the first goal of the game, you get to go out after the game, and they put up this thing in front of the goal and it's got a hole in it if you make the ball in it from the penalty marker then you get the prizes and the prizes hadn't been won you know and like this was a third week so it was like two hundred dollars in cash a portable color tv a stereo system i went out there was the first guy to ever get it in on the first try mm-hmm. it was it was pretty fun but um yeah that's, that's that was that's the most i've ever made in soccer <laughs> <laughs> stanley where did you uh, play soccer at? I, I grew up in south africa so i played soccer in south africa but a little a little story here is um Having worked up in Basito in New York, learning the concept, it's, it was just amazing this year during the World Cup last year, I should say, 2014, to have oh, yeah. all my Mexican compadres in the kitchen just rooting for Mexico, and I was one of them because, uh, sadly, South Africa didn't make it that year. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, just such a great work, and, and, you, and you see how soccer relates into, in fact, Basito in the Mexican culture. It's just such a team sport, and that's how we sort of relate how we run our restaurants. It's mm-hmm. it's just you know it's it's a team effort how we take care of people. But you know, great experience. It's uh, as I said, the older I get, the better I used to be in soccer, <laughs> and uh, that's an age thing. <clears throat> but a great game, and 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 really miss playing it. Now now you play. You run you run your restaurants just like the way the Mexicans play soccer and stuff like that. So <laughs> if if you come up with a bad meal, you're gonna have pitchforks on the back. You know. <laughs> 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 That's interesting. How you found, how we found out uh, today that we uh, that Jim and uh, Stanley played uh, soccer. We're out there uh, taking a photo, and then Stanley's sitting there in a soccer pose with his hands cupped in in front of his waist. And Jim looks over at Stanley and says, uh, "Did you play soccer?" And he's like, "Yeah." How do you know? He's like, gives the, the pose and stuff. You know, like a, I guess that's uh, how y'all stand in, in front of the goal wins everything when they're about uh, to take a penalty kick, right? What what do you call that pose? It's, oh. it's <laughs> taking care of yourself, folks. <laughs> he doesn't want to say it on the air, stuff. So, but it was uh, quite comic or thing. But yeah, it just came up by a, a chance comment. I've never seen anybody uh, pick a soccer player out of uh, you know random you know comment like that. But uh, very uh, very astute uh, you know observation uh, by uh, Jim over there. Stanley, did you play uh, professionally, or how did you yeah, know, how, how was it organized over there? South Africa many many years ago was semi pro. You couldn't uh, make a living playing soccer. That's for sure. So. Played a little bit of semi-pro soccer, played at university, uh, but just a great game to keep yourself in shape. No differently than, uh, you know, kids growing up here played baseball, played football. It was soccer. Where I, I think that's up. why we don't see uh, soccer played so much in America, because we're not all, not all about keeping in shape. <laughs> 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 Nobody wants to run around. I hate sports that you got to run around in and everything. I mean, how many, when you're playing soccer, how many miles are you running in a typical game? You're probably, you're probably running a, a good 10, 15 no, wait, wait, miles. Wait, wait, wait a second. You're talking to a goalie. <laughs> <laughs> he, he moved maybe five feet one way or the other most of the time. Yeah. That's the reality. Is that's why I can eat all this Mexican food that uh, I'm able to run around and just enjoy a good time. So uh, now you also, uh, you said you uh, grew up in South Africa, correct? And, but correct. you uh, spent time up in uh, Canada as well. What, what brought you from Canada, or what brought you out of South Africa up to Canada, first of all? Well, no, def- I... Uh, did the military in South Africa as everybody was drafted in those days and uh, mm-hmm. then decided, had an opportunity to come and work in Canada with a, uh, I've been in the hospitality business my whole life and uh, started off there and went through the role of working on a couple of restaurants, uh, a couple of large hotel chains and then had the opportunity to uh, develop Outback Steakhouses in, in Canada which, which was great. So I've actually lived in Canada with my family for 30 years but um, where I did grow up in uh, South Africa, a place called Durban, very similar to Florida. 30 years just doesn't cut it in Toronto. I'm, uh, I'm loving this weather up here, so I couldn't say no to the opportunity. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, used to, I played uh, soccer in the military, actually, too. I played for the base team. I was stationed over at Clark Air Base in the Philippines. And um, we actually uh, had, um, had a tournament over in Japan. And we had always played against the... Um, 
against the Navy guys. We always beat them like 10 to nothing. Hold that point there. Got right, to take a quick break. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Hi, welcome to Yeagers. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Yeagers, our primary business is hardwood flooring, although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop-at-home vans that have all the flooring-type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tiles, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area. Today at 813-275-3909 or visit tampaelectric.com slash save. Tampa Electric. The power to save you money. Dear God, thank you for keeping us safe and healthy. And give us food for tomorrow. We are really hungry. If you can help us find a home, that would be good too. You can be hope for the hungry by supporting Metropolitan Ministries at metromen.org. This report is brought to you by the Foundation for a Better Life. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? My neighbor. Mr. Rogers passed along friendship, hoping we would too. Friendship. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. From the Bright House Network's Traffic Center. Still seeing heavy delays in Pasco County on I-75 southbound, approaching State Road 52 because of a construction that's south of 52. That construction has the left lane blocked near mile marker 283. And still have a serious crash in Tampa blocking northbound traffic on 301 approaching I-4. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson and Uterwick Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line 866-545-9595. <laughs> Winds Weather Center says skies partly cloudy today. The high temperature up to 86. Tonight's low 64 degrees and then mostly sunny tomorrow with the afternoon high reaching 87. Let's talk nutrition weekday mornings at 9 on 1250 Winds WHNZ. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back, everybody, to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Catch the show on uh, weekdays at 8 a.m. here on 1250 WHNZ. And also uh, head over to my website, uh, tampabayradio.com, where you can catch past shows of this show and also uh, show recaps and information on all the uh, past guests. And you also see the... Um, the uh, lineup of the upcoming guests, uh, preview of uh, what's coming up uh, this week. Uh, tomorrow's show, we're going to be talking with uh, Justin Savage, the founder and CEO of uh, Market Tampa. He is a, a local uh, uh, astute real estate investor, uh, working with some hedge funds in the area. So he'll be uh, in here talking about uh, his business and how he was able to uh, grow and uh, and succeed in the uh, real estate space. And I uh, got a great interview uh, lined up tomorrow with uh, Carrie Lawrence. Uh, she is the uh, first female uh, fighter pilot in the Navy flying the F-14s. Uh, she's oh, wow. A, yeah, she's a professional uh, speaker and uh, coach, and uh, she's going to be uh, checking in with us uh, tomorrow. I'm, I'm excited to hear about that. You know, uh, anybody that flies an F-14, I mean, shoot, I mean, that's, a, that's mm -hmm. incredible. And, and to be the first female in the Navy to, to fly that jet, I'm uh, very excited. Uh, very excited to be uh, speaking with her tomorrow. So um, on uh, Wednesdays, uh, Working Women Wednesdays, always uh, a weekly feature highlighting uh, two uh, professional <coughs> women from uh, the Working Women of Tampa Bay group. We're going to be speaking with uh, Patricia Rossi. Uh, she is an acclaimed business etiquette coach, and uh, she is the NBC Daytime syndicated business etiquette business correspondent. So she's going nice. to be in the uh, studio with us on Wednesday along with uh, Fran Powers of Power Stories. A, uh, it's a, a place where you go and tell stories, act them out, things of that nature. So I'm very excited to talk with her. I'm sure she's going to have some great stories to share with us. Uh, Thursday, we're talking with uh, Aaron Cassidy from Majesty Title Services, a uh, mm -hmm. local uh, business uh, in the area. And as always, uh, Thursday is day 30. We'll have uh, Jim Yeager uh, in here. And I uh, don't know if Charlie the Plumber is going to show up, but if anybody's been watching my shows or uh, listening to me knows uh, Charlie the Plumber shows up with him. He is a uh, very... Uh, 
very uh, energetic uh, character and a half comes in and pretty much took up the whole second half of the show uh, last week telling a pretty uh, pretty funny uh, story. He's a former pro wrestler. And, oh. uh, so, <laughs> and so he was in here. He just started going on and on about a uh, wrestling story. And it's uh, you want to see that, you can head over uh, to my uh, website there and uh, catch uh, last Thursday's show around uh, 8.30. Uh, Charlie Palaveda, he's a local plumber, but we call him Charlie the Plumber. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, he was uh, it was all about his uh, days in wrestling. And he was telling a story about he almost got killed in the ring because uh, he had a dispute with somebody and, and uh, yeah it's a it's a long story but it's very entertaining the guy the guy's a chronic caller too he all the radio stations in town know him he calls in all the time and very uh right wing a tr- uh, pro-american person and uh, just very entertaining character and uh, uh happy to have him in studio with us and uh on friday when we talk with uh, copeland moore from uh, la segunda central bakery uh, it's a hundred year old business uh in the uh in the tampa region and uh they again they just celebrated a hundred years in the region so got a lot of great uh, uh business owners you know in uh, in and around the community to talk about and, and to share their stories uh with uh with my audience and everything so very excited to, to have this space uh to do that so um jim before the uh break there you're we we're talking about a, a story there with uh you were playing japan or something so when we hit well, the break yeah. there so go ahead and continue that if you want yeah, actually when i was playing at clark uh clark air base back over in the philippines we used to play the marines actually down in subic bay and we used to beat them like 10 to 1 10 to nothing about half Halfway through the game, you quit playing the ball as much as you tried to duck their swings because they were just trying to hit you at that point. They don't, they weren't even going after the ball. And uh, we went to Japan to play in a, a tournament there. And we got up early, and uh, I had a buddy of mine. His name was Bill Torres Luna. He's about four foot high and about four foot wide. He was our center defense guy. Either either the ball or the person didn't get by him, one or the other, you know. But anyway, before uh, when we was at breakfast or in the morning, he says, Jim, you know, you don't want to eat. You're going to be hungry out there. He goes, I, you know, he, he had a weight problem. He says, but I've got these special diet pills from the base. Why don't you take one of these diet pills so that way you won't get hungry? I'm like, oh, that makes sense to me. <laughs> you know, and, I, and at that point, uh, we were going out to play the Marines. There was only seven of them showed up. I had a wrap around my left ankle because it hurt so bad, you know. We used to beat the Marines when it was 11 to 11. We'd beat them like, you know, 10 to 1, 10 to nothing. Well, these weren't the Marines from the Philippines. They were from Japan. We got out there, and they kicked me so hard in my right ankle, I had to take the wrap off, (laughs) put on the other ankle. They beat us like about five to nothing with, you know, not even a full team. But I do want to say that 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 pill that he gave me, you know, to help me with my diet, I was sprinting up and down those sides. It was pure speed is what it was. <laughs> but I had a great time over there. <laughs> so let's go back over to uh, Stanley uh, Goodman here with uh, Besito Mexican. And so I know you're uh, involved with uh, some charities and giving back. So talk to us a little bit about the, the community involvement. Absolutely. So whenever we open one of our restaurants, it's, uh, it's very, very important for us that uh, we give back to the community. Uh, this year, uh, prior to us uh, opening the restaurant on April the 7th with the Pediatric uh, uh, Cure for Cancer Foundation. It will be our honor to do a, a charity event between the hours of 6 p.m. and 7, uh, 9 p.m. that evening. And all the proceeds from that charity event will, in fact, uh, get uh, donated back to uh, to the charity itself. Um, and, in fact, we can give you out that... Uh, yeah, go right that, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. If I could just have the address on that, it will be great. Um, but if, if at all possible, if there's any interest, number one is to go on the website at fastcure.org, O-R-G, or, you, or you can just call in at 813-269-0955. Once again, it's a, gr- it's a great cause. It's uh, the Pediatric uh, Cure for, uh, for Cancer Foundation. We'd love to have you all there and, uh, and help the event. Okay. And so uh, Basito is also involved uh, with uh, national uh, 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 movements as well. Talk to us about your uh, how uh, Basito gets back on a national level. Absolutely. So John Tunney, as I said, the founder of uh, Basito up in uh, New York, uh, has visited uh, Mexico on numerous occasions. was very touched by, you know, we come here and we eat like kings and live like lords and, and just see the other side of the world, other side of the coin for another phrase, and so how other people are living. And uh, every meal that we do, we donate back to uh, uh, Mexico to a, uh, a foundation c- uh, called uh, the San Miguel uh, Alandre. And uh, 1,500 meals a week are served in these kitchens to kids uh, from you know, after school. And it's an amazing program, and we just want to continue to grow that. As each restaurant will grow, and we'll grow this 
uh, this uh, Besido nationally, hopefully throughout the country, we will, uh, you know, hopefully make this into a really large opportunity. Yeah. Now, the uh, guacamole that you uh, just made here in the studio is amazing, by the way. This is some of the best guacamole that I ever had, and it was just uh, whipped up here uh, live in, uh, in the studio here. Now, this is uh, something that you're going to be offering tableside at all of uh, your, uh, at the restaurant. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the, this. Absolutely. So, in a part of the experience of coming into Besito, once again, as I said earlier, is to feel like you're coming into your own hacienda. So, you can expect that guacamole cart to roll up to your table, have that fresh house avocado opened up in front of you, uh, the fresh cilantro, the jalapenos, and just have a great time. That's what it's all about here. It's, it's enjoying taquitas, uh, the little minis, uh, eating with your hands and fingers, taking some great empanadas that we do, tamales made from scratch, the corn that's just shucked every day. That's what it's all about, just in having a great time. Yeah. Excellent. Now, now for our uh, late listeners, uh, rehash a little bit about uh, the restaurant, when it's opening, where it's going to be. And we're talking with uh, Stanley Goodman here of uh, Basito Mexican. But let's go back through that and everything. This is a, you know, a great you know, uh, local restaurant that's about to open up in the area. So uh, let's uh, rehash that for our late yes, listeners. Yes, Jamie. So the restaurant will open on uh, April the 8th. Uh, the, the concept is originally out of New York, where it was founded and, and has ex- Extreme ratings today. We like. We were very proud to say that the New York Post raised us the best Mexican upscale Mexican food in North America. Oh wow! Um, nice. And that doesn't mean anything. At the end of the day, as I said earlier on, there's some fantastic restaurants up in this part of the world, and there's enough space for everybody. We just want people to come by, have a great time. We're located at West Shore Plaza, uh, right next to the uh, P.F. Chang's and Magianos, and. Uh, Please come along and have a great time and enjoy authentic Mexican food that I can reassure you. Are you going to need to uh, have reservations uh, at this restaurant? Reservations are, 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 are okay to do. We have, uh, you can get onto open table or you can uh, come in through our website and just come in. Or at the, and at the same token, just as easily come into the restaurant and undress our managing partner. will be more than happy to take care of you. Now, what are some of the uh, restaurant details? Uh, what are we going to see when we walk into this restaurant? Tell me a little bit about the interior and, and what we're going to see inside. Yes. So walking in, you're going to see a, a, this feeling of a hacienda. You're going to see beautiful old wooden floors. You're going to see the ladderback chairs that you'd find up in Mexico. Mm-hmm. The ceilings in a typical hacienda is eucalyptus, which is... Uh, out of my home country, in fact, South Africa, where it comes from. You'll see the guacamole carts running around. The, uh, the furniture uh, is, is draped in, the, uh, in a, a sarape kind of feel to it. And it, the, the lighting is spectacular. It's an old antique lighting. It's, it's just a great feeling of feeling that you're in old world Mexico for a better term. Now, what type of uh, cocktails are you going to be serving over there? What, what, what's Mexico known for? Tell me, take me through some of these drinks that you're going to be serving over there. I, I talk from experience here because I've been to, uh, I've been up to the. I know you're going to have the margaritas in there. So, what, what else are we going to have over there? What, what are some of the uh, Mexican uh, cocktail offerings uh, that uh, that we should be looking forward to down there? Sure. Well, f- firstly, you know, tequila is not just uh, what we're used to from, from our old college days, and it's just knock back a shooter. Tequila <laughs> today has become like a fine wine, and going up into the town of Tequila, in the state of Jalisco you're able to understand what great sipping tequilas you can get, no different than a great wine list. And, mm-hmm. uh, and so we're, we're making all our margaritas from scratch, be it with pomegranate, be it with uh, jalapenos. We muddle all our own fruits. And even a fantastic play on the mojita is we actually do a tequila mojita, which is, which is phenomenal. Over and above that, we have all the, the, uh, the Mexican beers in Negro Modela, uh, some, of, some of the other favorites, sangria, and and a and a, and a very uh, minimal wine list, but great wine list of of. Yes, yeah, so you have a list in. of uh, seventy-five tequilas uh, that you're going to be uh, uh, for sipping and tasting. Seventy-five. Different, how can you make seventy-five different tequilas? To me, it all tastes the same almost. Tell, tell me, what am I missing here? Okay, so it's once again, it's like a fine scotch. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, you you go from a blanca tequila to a, a reposada to a añejo, and it's all the aging of the tequilas, how it's aged in the barrels, etc. And if, you, and if you drink enough of them, you will be missing your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know. Tequila is just one of those things that it just all tastes the same. But then again, I'm not an experienced tequila drinker. And, but I will say one thing, though. I have noticed that when I do drink uh, some margaritas or some stuff with tequila, and it, depending on the type of tequila, it d- d- determines the hangover that you're going to have the next day because there's some really bad <laughs> stuff on the market. Or will you, where you will be or will not be waking up, yeah. <laughs> So what, what makes a good tequila? I mean, what are we looking for in a tequila? Well, firstly, a, a, a tequila is made from the, uh, the agave plant. And mm. no different than, 
for example, champagne that must come out of the region of Champagne, true tequila must come out of the region of the town of tequila and to have authentic blue agave as the tequila. And depending on how it's aged, it's aged in oak to give it different flavor profiles. It, the soil that it's grown in, it can give you different flavor profiles, citrus flavors, coconut flavors, etc. And you'd be quite amazed today what, when you're sipping these tequilas. It is an acquired taste and very interesting for people to get involved with. I think it's very interesting that Mexico has the slogan, you know, don't drink the water, and it's a fiesta town. I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, you know, hey, you can't drink the water, so what are you going to drink? Right. Tequila, right? <laughs> and of course, a cold cerveza. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, the price point for your restaurant? Uh, talk to me a little bit about the prices for lunch, dinner, things of that nature. Yes, yeah, so we're very, very affordable. It's, uh, our, our price ranges run from appetizers. It's at 6 $7 at lunchtime to an $18 check for uh, entree for, uh, for lunch. And you're, you're in that range of about anything from about 20 to $30 in the dinner range for dinner. So very, very affordable and, and great value for what you're getting in an upscale white tablecloth type of environment. Very nice, very yeah. nice. Got to take another uh, quick break, but if you're uh, just tuning in, we've been talking with uh, Stanley Goodman, uh, Basito Mexican, a uh, the Mexican cuisine that's going to be opening up in uh, South Tampa over in the West Shore area here next month, and also uh, co-host today, uh, Jim McPeak of the McPeak Real Estate Firm. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their Shop at Home Flooring Sales Service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made, well-born cabinets and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. In the market for a reverse mortgage? Contact Access Reverse, a local company with personalized service in the Bay Area. Call them at 727-347-0305 or visit AccessReverse.com for a no-cost, no-obligation consultation. They'll come to your home and speak with you about the best options for your reverse mortgage. Plus, they offer the lowest closing costs. Don't just get a reverse mortgage. Get the right reverse mortgage with Access Reverse. Visit AccessReverse.com. NMLS number 4566. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage want you to experience the thrill of one-day underwriting and the comfort in knowing your loans will be clear to close in record time. While a competition looks to a lost closing date, Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage focus on their 12-day clear-to-close. They do this by utilizing their world-class operations staff to underwrite your loan within six hours, process your loan in 12 days, and have your loan closed in time. Underwritten in six hours, cleared to close in 12 days. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage. Are you looking for a local real estate firm that knows the market and has your interests in mind? Then contact Jim McPeak at McPeak Real Estate Firm a family-owned business whose agents have over 60-plus years of experience in the Tampa Bay market. Many of the agents are military veterans that know the VA process for buying a home and are proud to help our military members in any way they can. From residential to commercial real estate, McPeak Real Estate Firm is here to help. Contact Jim at 813-495-3875 and learn more at mcpeakteam.com. This report is brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Your garbage can be more than just garbage. Give it another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. A public service message brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. From the Bright House Network's Traffic Center. Problems continue in Pasco County this morning. We had emergency road construction on the southbound side of I-75. It's going to be south of State Road 52 near mile marker 283. The left lane is still blocked here. Expect delays back to just before State Road 52. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamston. Uterwick Hillsborough traffic tip line 866-545-9595. <laughs> Partly cloudy skies today. We'll have a 30% chance of rain this afternoon and a high in the mid-80s. Tonight, partly cloudy with a low of 66. And tomorrow, a bit more humid. We'll have a 20% chance of rain and a high of 83. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back, everybody, to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. We've been uh, talking in studio today with uh, Stanley Goodman of uh, Basito Mexican, a uh, Mexican cuisine that's uh, going to be opening up in uh, South Tampa 
in the uh, West Shore uh, District here in just uh, about 30 days or so, next month or so. Also uh, in studio, co-host uh, Jim McPeak of the McPeak Real Estate Firm. So, Jim, talk to us a little bit uh, about what you're seeing with uh, the new home market. I know uh, this is an area that you specialize in over at your firm. Oh, yeah. We have we have several agents that, that take care of you when it comes to new homes. And one of the things that we're seeing right now is that the new homes are blowing up all over the place. We've got new homes in Riverview, Ruskin. Um, we actually have some in New Tampa that are very, very nice and very affordable for the new. I mean, the South Tampa area. We have New Tampa too, um, but down in Riverview, Ruskin, there's there's so many of them that it's a great opportunity for somebody to hook up with us. Um, all of our services are free to buyers. And we can show them around to the new homes. And, and like we was saying, uh, you know, you can get into one of these new homes very reasonable, um, sometimes with little to no money down. And then you can have a uh, Mexican fiesta, <laughs> open house, home warming, home warming, you know, thing. And, and Stanley said that uh, he's got just the right information to give you to uh, put this on. What are some of the uh, new home communities that are that are hot right now? What are, where where are you seeing uh, some good values and stuff uh, in the in the Tampa region? Well, one of the new new uh, hot ones is actually Waterset, and it's down um, like in Apollo Beach. There's several builders in there, but it's right next to um, St. Joseph's uh, new hospital that went down there. There's a bunch of nice restaurants down there. I'm sure we'll get a pasito down there pretty soon. <laughs> um, but until then, you know, we can still order from them. But there's so many opportunities right in that area. It's close to the water, close to the golf, you know, uh, close to everything. Close to 75, which is easy access to and from wherever you want to go. What type of incentives are you seeing from the new home builders? There's a lot of people in, in real estate always neglect the uh, the new home builders and stuff, and your firm uh, specializes that and, and directs buyers over to those communities and stuff. What are some of the uh, the incentives that some of these uh, developers are offering now? They're offering quite a few incentives, like uh, closing costs, um, actually some free items inside, like you may get free washer, dryer. You may you may come into a house where all you need is your clothes and your toothbrush with some of these uh, builders right now. And one of the nice things is, is that when you're buying a new home, you actually have a home warranty with it that comes with it. Now, the other thing that's really great now is that the energy efficiency of new homes are at a point that they've never been before. And if you're buying one of these um, foreclosed homes that was, even though it's nice, it was foreclosed on about 10, 15 <laughs> years ago. You know, That's my was, specialty right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> it was foreclosed on, you know, a while back. Um, you don't know what's behind those walls. There's no warranty. There's no guarantee after that. So when it comes to, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you, you get what you pay for, you know. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to new homes, you actually get a lot more. And with today's interest rates and the incentives that the builders have, which a lot of times, as you know, um, if you're asking the bank to pay, you know, an uh, exorbitant amount of closing costs, the answer is no. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you know, as you know, that's how you and I know each other is, you know, I specialize in the sale of bank owned properties and I've helped, uh, helped your firm out a lot with, uh, the selling of HUD properties and everything. But yeah, I mean, you can get a lot of great deals in the new home market. Everybody seems to think that foreclosures are a great deal. Sometimes they are, but mm -hmm. they come with a, uh, haven of, uh, you know, problems. And, and, and so you never know what you're going to get inside these homes. And there's always, always problems with, uh, foreclosed properties. Yeah. I mean, they're discounted and stuff, but there's, there's just a lot of work and stuff that you got to do with them. There, there is. There is. And that, now, now, one thing I would say is that I, I love to sell Jamie's HUD homes because <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, you know, Jamie has HUD homes that we can actually get for $100 down. Yeah. And and if, if you get in with um, the HUD home with a 203K, which is a rehab program, we can get you into a HUD home with $100 down and get you money to fix and repair that place up. Mm -hmm. So um, if, you, if you're looking for a good home that Jamie has, call me. <laughs> you can call me too. No, <laughs> <Can you? laughs> no but uh, HUDHomestore.com, that's the site where people can uh, go and uh, and find these properties and everything. But, yeah, $100 down is a very uh, good program that uh, people uh, don't take advantage of. And you got to be clear here. It's, you don't just show up to closing with $100 down. I mean, mm -hmm. that takes the place of the 3.5% down payment. And uh, so you'll have closing costs on top of that. So you're really showing up to closing with a, a couple thousand dollars. But, uh, you know, again, $100 down you know, replaces the 3.5% down payment that you would normally uh, to have to pick up on a uh, on an FHA loan and a, and a great program right there. So again, but when you couple that with a 203K, which is the, I'm sorry, the rehab program, which you can actually get, you know, five to $15,000 to help you fix a, a house mm -hmm. up. Yep. Cause some of the, a lot of these houses do need repairs and everything. Right. And a lot of them are qualified for the 203K, which you can get in there 
hundred dollars down, get money to fix it up, yep. and it's all rolled into your mortgage. Which mortgages right now? What are they? Less than five percent? You know, that's yeah. unbelievable. I remember when I got in. You know, they they were like thirteen to fifteen percent interest rates. Yeah, it's crazy. That's what my parents remind me all the time. In the eighties, they bought their first home. I think it was like seventeen percent interest. Yeah, that's crazy. I couldn't imagine. And I've, I've said many times on my show that the fact that the low interest the interest rates have remained low over the last you know during this this housing down decline mm-hmm. is really what saved us. Because if we had had this decline that started in two thousand eight to two thousand and twelve on top of high interest rates, it would have been devastating, even more devastating than it already was. So that was you know a blessing that interest rates stayed you know where they where they are and and i mean shoot where are we at now we're so in the fours right oh so, you know it depends on where you go and what, what kind of financing i mean i've seen some down as low as threes there's a program out right now that one company was telling us that um, started out like in the twos and the most it went up to was like five and it mm-hmm. was like some kind of adjustable rate mortgage but you know those used to be really bad but it depends on you know if you look at the fine print and you go over it and everything some of them makes a lot of sense right now yeah yeah and how long have you been in business jim i mean you're a pretty experienced firm i always give a recommendation out uh, for uh, people that want to w- work with uh uh jim mcpeak and everything he he takes the time to train his agents he invites me in to tell them how to sell these hud properties and other bank owned properties a lot of brokers don't take that time to to educate their agents and there's just so much you need to know when buying foreclosed properties so so that's a testament uh you know to yourself and your firm well, you know, I'm glad you asked me today with Pasito here, you know, how long have I been doing real estate? <laughs> well, I got my real estate license, Cinco de Mayo, 1986. Oh, wow. Cinco de Mayo. So. <laughs> well, we got a couple of minutes left. I'm going to come back over here to uh, Stanley Goodman uh, before the uh, the show ends. So for the late listeners, let's uh, talk a little bit more about Pasito and, uh, you know, the restaurant and uh, it, its grand opening and everything. So first of all, um, Pasito is opening when? It'll be open April the 8th, that, that it's uh, on a Wednesday, and we're looking forward to having uh, everybody from South Tampa and from around come by and have some amazing... Do you have any uh, big grand opening planned, or is it just going to be uh, open the doors and come on in, or what, what's planned for the day? The day before the uh, the 7th, which is a Tuesday, we, we're working with the uh, Pediatric Cure for Cancer Foundation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we'd love to invite folks to come across there and come and enjoy... Uh, the opportunity to taste our great food and mm-hmm. drinks and at the same token all funds that will be collected for this event and proceeds will be donated to the uh, charity and if if you'd like you can go into fastcure.org or call at 813-269-0955 to come and, uh, and showcase where is this event this where? will be this will be at the restaurant between 6 and 9 p.m. and let me say this it's a great start to the NCAA women's uh, program just before that oh yeah so we had a clear uh, great time yeah we were talking about that uh just uh last week on uh working women wednesdays uh the uh, ncaa final four women's tournament uh, is going to be uh, played at the amelie arena this year and we had a uh, claire lessinger from the uh, tampa bay sports commission uh she was in uh studio uh jet just last week so we we're talking all about that and uh, you know the, another great event you know in the uh, tampa bay community i'd like to be more involved in the women's athletic support <laughs> well, i'll put you in touch with her jim how's that so and uh what is the address uh for the uh, basita restaurant where are you going to be so located? So we're at West Shore Plaza, 205 West Shore Plaza, uh, which everyone's familiar 205 with. 205 West Shore Plaza That's in right, Tampa. Right next door to the uh, P.F. Chang's and uh, Maggiano's. And just ask for Andres. Andres, our managing partner, is just phenomenal with our guests. Uh, he's, this, uh, he's, he's Mr. Hospitality. Yeah, and this uh, table side guacamole that you're all going to be whipping up uh, is uh, to die for here. I've been having this on the on my breaks here today. So. Are we going to have some kind of celebration for my real estate uh, license, you know, on Cinco de Mayo Day? <laughs> Absolutely. Just come by, Jim. Bring, it, bring, all your, bring all your folks, and we'll take care of you on Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> if you are uh, just uh, been tuning in, we've been talking with uh, Stanley Goodman of uh, Basito, uh, Mexican, and Jim McPeak of the McPeak Real Estate Firm. I hope everybody Everybody has a great Monday. Got to head on out of here. But you've been listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Have a great day, everybody.